Today we're shining a light on a tool inside Xtool Studio that I think deserves more attention. It is tucked away inside the applications menu and it has the power to save you time, remove your busy work and make your workflow feel cleaner. If you saw my video on the five useful features inside Studio, then you know how excited I am about this one. And if you watched it, thank you very much. That video got a lot of good attention, many good reactions, and the comments told me something very important. You want real examples and you want to see how these features actually land in the real world. And many of you are still not sure if it is worth switching from XES after getting so comfortable with it. And this is where things get interesting because batch fill existed in XCS, but Studio takes that core idea and it gives it a serious boost. The recognition feels sharper, the placement is smarter, and the whole process feels more modern. This is not just a repeat of an old feature, it is a hint as to where Xtool is going with Studio. So in this video, I wanna show you what the new batch fill can actually do. Not in a sales pitch way, not in a flashy demo that hides the steps. I want to walk you through the process the same way you would do at home. Real materials, a simple design, a quick setup, and a clear view of how Studio handles everything for you. If you're curious about Studio or still debating whether to upgrade, this is the perfect place to see the difference. Let's get into it. Last week, and for my first test, I used a small keychain and I engraved a tiny QR code with my website on it. It worked surprisingly well and it showed me the potential. But today I want to make a more practical example. I will use the same core coasters from my material test video. I have a few coasters ready and I will engrave the same design in all of them. Yeah, my sample is not a very big sample, but it is perfect for showing you how the feature actually works. As always, for my design, I picked something from Creative Fabrica. I have been a paying customer for two years and their library is just fantastic. So if you want to check them out, you know the links in the description. Now, before we start, there are a couple of things we need to set up. Make sure you have the latest version of Studio. Also double check there the batch fill version because you will also need to update it. If you have all that taken care of, then let's just move on. I will run Studio from my laptop and connect directly to my S1 using the USB cable. I also need the XES mobile app installed on my phone. The name has not changed yet, but I assume eventually it will switch over to Studio or something. Your laser also needs to be connected to the Wi-Fi. And your phone must be connected to the laser through the mobile app. That is what allows Studio and your computer to talk to XES on your phone and use the phone camera as a top view. If you have a machine with a built-in camera, then you can skip the phone setup. It would be nice to have a built-in camera on the S1. That would be a real advantage, but we will make do with our phone. Whatever method you use, just make sure the camera lens is clean and that your room has a decent lighting. To use the phone camera, we need this little round stickers that came with your machine. These uh, stickers create the scanning frame that the system uses to understand where your materials are placed. I couldn't find mine at first, but they were actually hiding inside this box where the filters came in. You get extra sets in the batch there, but if you ever run out, you can always print new ones from Xtool's support site. I will share the link below. Place the stickers in the order the system shows you, that is crucial. The alignment doesn't have to be exact, just close enough for the calibration to understand. I place some of the stickers on the base plates for future reference and some on top of the honeycomb for our test today. On the honeycomb, I just cut them to shape instead of peeling off the backing. I think for a more permanent solution, I will stick these little guys on some magnets. The calibration process will guide you through each sticker one by one. Follow that order and you will be done in a minute. Go back to Studio on your computer and click the frame button next to the marking option. In some machines with built-in cameras, the actual button looks like a camera. Once you click that button, Studio will show you a QR code and, and just leave it there for now. Take a picture of the materials inside the frame. If a material is outside that camera view, the system will not pick it up. So stay inside the frame lines and you will be fine. When you have a picture that you like, 
scan the QR code on the screen and send the picture to Studio. Studio will import that picture in just a couple of seconds and then we'll place it on your canvas. For best results, keep a couple of things in mind. Materials should be flat, no thicker than four millimeters. Try to place them closer to the center of the base plate or the honeycomb. They need at least two millimeters of space between them. This will help the system match them correctly. The algorithm looks for objects that have similar size, shape, and color. If your materials are close in colors to the base plate or they are reflective, you can add a light coat of water-soluble paint or laser spray. This will help the camera pick them out cleanly. Once Studio has your picture ready, you can place your designs on one of the coasters. Adjust the size and angle and position it exactly how you want it. As soon as you're satisfied with the placement, go to the Applications menu and refine the area used for recognition. This is done with the Frame Out option. Frame your materials just right. This lets you tighten things up so that the alignment is more accurate. Now, to start the batch work, go to the Applications menu and select Batch Fill. Studio will generate multiple copies of your design and place them on top of all the recognized materials. This process will take a few seconds or a couple of minutes, depending on how many materials you have placed on the honeycomb, the speed of your computer, and so on. The system can handle up to 20 pieces all at once. I think that's plenty. Once done, you're ready to engrave. So this was batch fill. Not bad, right? This little feature doesn't make any noise. It doesn't take over the screen, but it quietly transforms how repeat projects feel. And once you see how a studio handles recognition and placement, I think it becomes hard to go back to lining up every piece by hand. It is one of those upgrades that sneaks up on you. You try it once and your mind instantly starts imagining all the ways you can use it. Coaster, tags, personal gifts, keychains. It turns time-consuming processes into something smooth and predictable in a good way. If you were still deciding whether to move from XCS to Studio, I hope this gave you a clear sense of the difference. The studio is not only catching up to the old workflow, it is pushing forward and batch fill is a good example of where that progress is happening. If you learned something today, consider subscribing to the channel and sharing this video with someone who is thinking about making the jump to studio. Every bit of your support helps the channel grow and it keeps this deep dive tutorials coming. Now, if you want to go deeper into studio, I have more videos in the series ready for you. And if you want inspiration for design, materials and project ideas, check out the links in the description. And thank you for spending your valuable time with me today in the shop. You see, I told you, you got this. Severna out.